Hi guys and welcome to Bank and Draws. Today I want to talk about how you can improve a drawing. This is also a feedback video at the same time. I don't know if you recall it, but I posted a video some time ago where I encouraged my subscribers to send in their drawings and then I would pick some and I would get some feedback to them on how they could improve their drawing. And a lot of people send in their drawings and honestly I'm I'm so flattered about the amount of drawings that were sent in and how many of you were so kind in, in praising what I do and, and my channel even though I'm not the best at uploading videos so thank you so much for that. Um, but I did pick some drawings and for this video we are going to focus on this drawing by Marina Suzuki. I don't know if I'm saying this right, she's from Japan. And actually Marina sent in two drawings, uh, she sent in this one and then this one. And the reason that I have both of these drawings in this video is actually because uh, I think this drawing in particular is actually um, really well pulled off. And I wanted to give her, I really hope it's a her, I don't know if uh, Marina could be a Japanese uh, male name, so I'm sorry if that's the case. But I just wanted to do a shout out of this drawing because I think it works really well, but I'll come back to this afterwards and tell you why I think it works really well. But for this drawing, I think that we could do some small improvements. Looking at this drawing, the first thing that I notice, I could just write it down, is that it's very flat um, in its colors. So there are no shading. And also, it lacks texture. So these are the three things that I would focus in on in this drawing. Um, but also, before you focus in on these things, which is normally the steps you go to after you made your line art, is does the line art work? And this is sort of like a step on its own before you go to the second step um, where you go in and you color and you shade and you work on your texture. Um, and what I would do with this drawing was to look first and foremost on how does this line art work for me. Um, you could go in and then work on top of this drawing already, which I of course have the benefit of, but I think for this particular drawing I want to strip down uh, to the line art level. So if we go ahead and turn down the opacity on this one, we remove this one, we remove the dark layer there, and then put a, a layer on top of the layer that we want to fix and draw on. So now I'm gonna take a look at this line art right here. I'm just gonna uh, pick this brush from uh, my uh, my brush set, which I think some of you guys are familiar with. And I'm going for the line detail. It's one of my favorite sketches um, or favorite uh, brushes for sketches. You can also use the construction pencil or the awesome paint sketch. But, you know, um, at the moment this one is, is my favorite. I tend to go back and forth a little. So, um, as we can see here, we have a mole creature. I think that's very obvious. I think she, she hit that pretty good. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to do when working with this mole creature is actually I'm going to flip the canvas because right now I'm used to seeing it from this view. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge my, my eye a little and turn it around. So I think the face for me is actually okay in this picture but i think there's something with this arm right here i think it's a little too high up so i think i would take that down a little bit i would also make sure that in my line art i would actually put in just a little bit of texture Sometimes it, it's okay that what you're working with is not like super smooth 
clean lines. I think it adds a little something to the drawing. I can also see in this drawing that even though we're working with a mole creature, um, we don't really have uh, an ear. I think I would be tempted to put in a little ear on it because it's it's still part of the facial features and it looks cute on an animal. And remember now, when I do this feedback, um, that I take the liberty to to do my own thing as well. This is not to say that you should do it as well. It's just my kind of style and um, you can either uh, take it in and uh, see if you want to adopt it or whatever, um, but you don't have to do that. But as I said in my video, I'm taking the liberty to to work with these drawings as I see fit as well. Now another thing that I would do with this line art would be to give it a little more space. Um, I think the body is cut off a little too soon. Um, so I think that I would definitely try and and give it a little bit more room, if that makes sense. Just a little. What I'm going to do now with this drawing is I'm going to take it back like this. Then I'm going to put in the eye. What I really like about Marina's drawing here is actually she has the eyebrow all the way down here and that works pretty well too. I think I'm going to do that. So. I kind of like what she did with that eye right there. So I think I'm going to stick with that and copy it a little bit so we have that kind of sad face going on. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that layer completely to make sure that my line art fits. So here we are. I'm going to put in a little bit of extra textures because again that's something that that I really like to work with. I'm going to turn this up again because now I want to use those original colors and I just want a, like a tinier thumbnail to work from. When I put in the, the colors, I'm going to work with the base color that Marina is already um, using in her drawing and I'm going to use it to, to block in. Now because I have a pretty solid line art right here, I think I'm just going to connect the holes in that line art and then I'm going to use a little trick. Now what I'm going to do with the selection tool is that I'm going to put it on automatic. And then I'm going to select the area around your line art. So it's important that you stay on your layer where you have your line art. And then you select the, the area around it. Now if you hold your pen down, you can see you can turn the threshold up and down. And see, this is apparently too much. Then it selects the uh, inside of the line art. But around 9.3 it doesn't um, then you go to invert in the menu and then it selects everything inside your line art this is not a, a perfect method of coloring but it does make it a little easier it's kind of like a, a shortcut that you can correct and then you go to the layer below your line art where you want your color and then you simply color it like this. Now you have that flat coloring. Now if you deselect it, you can see some of the areas it has kind of colored a little too much of the line art 
but you can always go in afterwards and you can correct that and probably when you get to the texture level you're gonna go in anyways and correct the outer line of that so this is fine for now now we make another layer and we make a clipping mask and now we want to go in and color the rest like this Now there is nothing wrong with the color that was picked for for this drawing, none at all. The only problem there is, is that there is just not enough nuances in the color. It's, it's two very simple colors that lacks a little bit of, of life in a way. I, I would actually go in and also color the ear like that. And maybe we could even play around with some different colors in these ones. Maybe we could go in here, we could make it slightly redder. And a bit more gray. And then we could go in and we could make a different color for the stomach. So that is maybe our flat colors. Then I would want to go into the smudge tool and for the smudge brush I use my own brush again called Awesome Smudge Paint. And I could sort of go in and smudge up edges right here just to give it a little, little extra like that. Now, I want to make another layer again and turn it on clipping mask. And this layer I want to use for some shadows and some highlights already. And to do that, I want to go in and pick like a dark blue. I want to drag it over, turn it on multiply. Then I want to turn the opacity down to let's say 36 like this. Then I'm going to create a mask over this and pick an airbrush again from my modified brush set uh, which you can of course get on my Etsy store. There's a link in every video that I'm uploading. And then I would go in and I would erase shadow. But to do that, I need to figure out where my light source is coming from. And since we have so much going on in the face of this creature, I want my light source to be on the front of its face. So if the light source hit, so if the light hits here, it will probably follow some of the edges right here. Maybe it could also hit the ear a little bit, the shoulder, like so. Maybe also even a little on the eye right there. Already now we're getting to see a bit more life in this character. Um, as I look at it now, I can see that I kind of forgot something on my color layer, which is the eye. Want a little bit of white in there. Now what I do is I make an extra layer and again on clipping mask. And remember guys, when you use clipping masks, what it means is that you, you lean all the above layers right here, you lean that towards the color blocking layer that the clipping mask is clipping itself onto. Now I want to go in and work a little bit more with the shadows. And I want to use an airbrush for that. 
this is just to give it a little extra and as you can see I put it on overlay um, which means that whatever color you're putting over the color you have underneath it's gonna sort of adapt to that color and that's really good for working in some extra shadows you can see what I'm doing here is I'm putting in some shade from the arm but what's annoying is that there's a little bit of area between the shade and the elbow that, that doesn't really connect so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna outline the arm like so and then I'm gonna take my airbrush and gently draw in the shade of the arm and then I'm gonna deselect it and then you can see the shade right there sometimes that's necessary to do when you have really sharp edges then I make another layer also in overlay and now I want to remember the clipping mask and now I want to draw in a little bit of the light source and usually that light source is maybe warm if it comes from the sun. We could kind of imagine that it does. So I put it in a warm yellowish, orangish color. And then I try to hit those highlight areas. Now, I'm not going to go into too much details because you could stay on these individual steps for quite a long time. But usually what I would do now after this step, let's say that we're happy about that, I would merge everything. So now you can see we have this outline right here. What you can do now is you can try and blend in the line art with your color. and to do that, we can duplicate this layer. We can sort of figure out how strong do we want this line art to be. I don't necessarily want it to be that strong. I only duplicated it because I want it as a backup. Because what I'm going to do with the line art we have right here is that I'm going to take two fingers and I'm going to slide it, which means that I lock it. You can also press it and then turn it on alpha lock. But now the line art is locked locked which means that I can draw on it and that is exactly what I am going to do so I can color pick the color next to my line art and I can sort of go in and I can color over it like this this gives it um, kinda like a blended feel with your line art without erasing it because sometimes maybe you want the texture of the line art to remain and do you remember what I said in the beginning when I talked about that I actually like to have a bit of a rough line art that's because when you have the texture in your line art and you blend it in like this um, it kinda allows you to to use the benefit of that texture in your line art if that makes sense. Now there are some places where you want to keep some of the line art um, where you have natural shading um, like for example between the fingers right here it's a good idea to keep it. So now I just work my way around the drawing and I blend in but we're not gonna get around the rendering stage and this is where many people kind of come to a halt in their drawing because rendering is hard it takes time and it takes a lot of practice but the rendering part of the image uh, goes in a layer which goes on top of everything else you've been doing you find a brush that you deem worthy of your rendering for example for this awesome paint sketch would be good and then you go in and you simply render all of those little details 
that you want on top. And I kind of like this fluffy look, especially when I, I draw animals. So drawing in some of that works really well for me. I already have a little of it from my line art texture, which I can sort of lean against in a way. Sometimes it's a really good idea when you work on this rendering level um, not to have a wide background because you tend not to be able to see um, the outline of what you're doing. Maybe it looks a little bit rough what I'm doing and that's actually on purpose because I want to go in and use my smudge tool afterwards. I just need to have something to kind of smush out. Sometimes you can also take the eraser tool and you can go in and revisit some of the edges and this is where you can get really picky. Obviously for this drawing I just want to prove a point. I'm not going to be that perfectionistic. So now I just continued rendering a little bit um, extra on this character. I think I'm still going to add a little bit of hairs. Okay, an extra little thing that you can do for your drawing on this level is to make a little bit of um, a background. It doesn't have to be much, but I think sometimes just a little goes a long way. And what I usually do is I match it with the light source. So if we just quickly remove that. I pick an airbrush and then just make a little bit of a dark shadow behind the character. It's important that you follow the natural shading um, based on the light source. So if we go in and we pick a lighter color and we light it up just a little bit from the side here. This sort of lifts the character a little bit off the paper. So yeah, that would be my way of going around changing this picture into a more rendered, more textured version. And as you can see, the problem points I had at the beginning of uh, this tutorial was that the colors were a little too flat and there was not enough nuances and there was not enough texture in the colors and the line art was a little too clean. These are all things that we have now changed up in this new version. Now I just quickly want to comment on this illustration that is also made by Marina. This illustration is a very different style from the style that I usually draw in, but it still works really really well and it still adheres to the basic principles that I was talking about that we have some nuances in the color where it changes from the darker tones up here and then to the lighter tones here and then it changes to to dark again down here which means that we have like a highlighted area in between here where we have a light source hitting that works really really well because it gives a nice sort of uh, dynamic and a little bit more life into the hair and also we have some really nice eyes with with a good highlight 
we have again a change in the texture. Inside the eye we have different colors that we're working with. Um, we also have changes in the skin tone coming down the face into the chin. Also as a natural way of indicating that the skin tone we have up here under the hair is a darker shade because it's in shade. We also have a lot of different textures and colors in the body of this character. And again, the line art is still very clean, but I can see that a brush has been used with a little bit of texture to the brush itself, which works really well with this. So a very different style from my own but with enough color and texture and life to give it a very good dynamic. So that was it you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope some of the advice was something that you feel like you can use as well. Please remember that my style of drawing is my preferred style. It doesn't mean that whatever you do is wrong, but be mindful of how you apply life into your drawing. Be mindful of the colors that you use, be mindful of of the line art as well, and, and how you use it in your drawing. I do think that line art and coloring, um, it's able to merge in a way that, that can really benefit the final layout. You don't have to erase it completely if you wanna go full color. You just need to work it in. Also, I want to give thanks to Marina Susiki for sending in her drawings. Uh, it was super fun looking at what you did and I also want to thank you a bunch for supporting me and, and my channel. It really means a lot to me. And thank you for being willing to share this with all of the other subscribers that I do have. And lastly, all of the brushes that I have been using in this tutorial are available on my Etsy store for a fair price, at least I think so myself. Um, I also sell my uh, Linus grass and foliage brushes on that very same store, which you can also check out. And now there's nothing left to say, but thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you like it, and a subscribe if you're a first-timer here and want to support my channel. Thank you so much. Bye!